Chris, I'm glad to have you here and uh, talk about Alexei Pokusevsky, a really good, maybe great European prospect. You've seen uh, Alexei. When was, uh, when was the first time you saw him? So the first time I saw Alexei in person um, was at our Basketball Without Borders camp in Europe in 2018. So that was in his home country of Serbia, back in his native home country. Um, and that, that was the first time I got to see him in person. I had seen uh, video of him before that. And, and since then, uh, I've seen a, a lot of video um, so that we can kind of track his progress and track his growth. Um, but yeah, like you said, he's, he's a very good and potentially great uh, European prospect. And he's still very young and has a lot of room to, to continue to grow and develop. So we're excited to, to see where that goes. And um, def definitely uh, will be fun to watch. More or less, we know his strengths as a player. Tell me some of his uh, weaknesses. Yeah, like you said, he's, he's still very young. So, uh, any, you know, the, the areas for him to continue growing are, are there. But I think he's also, as an eight, you know, he's only 18 years old. He'll very likely be one of the youngest players in the draft this year. Um, I think, you know, for him, the, the, probably the two biggest things I would highlight as areas that'll, that'll help kind of determine how far he's able to go and his success will be um, consistency in his shooting. Um, he's clearly a, a, a great shooter and has great shooting mechanics and he shoots well off the dribble, which I think is a great sign. Um, now it's just about being consistency, being consistent. And that uh, will, I think, help him if he's able to really make uh, particularly the three point shot at a really consistent rate. Coaches have no choice at that point, but to, to put you on the floor and that'll help him grow um, even more as a player as he earns playing time. And then the second thing was just physically um, he's, he's going to fill out his frame. I think that's, um, something he'll have to do and he will do naturally, I think, as he, as he gets older and also as he's exposed to, um, you know, NBA strength and conditioning programs and coaches um, and, and all those things, I think that'll help him, um, you know, reach the next level because as a seven footer, you have to be able to, to protect the pain and protect the rim. And if, you know, you have to have some, some mass. And hit. So he'll build that up, I think. I, I have no question that he'll do. Do you think it's easier for a European prospect than one from an NCAA prospect to adjust to the NBA the first couple of years? And I'm asking you that because in European basketball, we see more tactic. It's, it's hard to say one path is better than the other. I think there are definitely advantages and disadvantages to, to either path. And I think we've seen different players achieve success using so many different pathways. Okay, let's say that you're sitting in, uh, on the stands and you're watching Alexei practicing and at the end of the practice, he approaches you and he asks you, should I stay in Europe for a couple of years and play or should I go to the NBA and the first, my rookie season or maybe my, my second season play only in garbage time? Yeah, again, it's a, it's a great question and there's probably no correct answer because both ways can can lead to success right so um i i think to your point there's the, the benefits of, of more playing time and things like that in, in europe um in the nba you have access to the very best of the best in terms of facilities and coaching and um and also you know models i mean i, I think the fact that he's been a pro at olympiakos has served him well right he's had access to great coaching and great facilities and, and veterans to learn from. And I think that's the type of thing also in the NBA. That's one of the great benefits is that you're getting, you're learning from the very best of the best and you're learning how to be a pro and how to approach the game. And even if you're not playing a ton of minutes in your first year, you're, you're still getting a lot of those benefits. And so I, I, just like the, the previous question, I don't know if there's necessarily a right answer and, and it would really depend on what the player is looking for. Um, but, but I, I don't think he can go wrong. Um, either way, whether it's staying, sticking around with Olympiacos in, or, or in Europe versus going to the NBA and, and trying to carve out a role. Um, I do think because he's so unique as a prospect, he'll, he'll have a chance to carve out a role, um, you know, fa fairly quickly in the NBA. And, and so I think, you know, he, he's, he's at that point soon where he'll be ready to come over. Alexei, obviously Serbian, but he grew up in Athens, Greece, and we all here love Yanis Ledokubo. And uh, he has some similarities, speaking size, 
his, that his skills is like a shooting guard or a point forward, let's name it. So I think that his mind is to, to, to follow his path. Do you think that NBA scouters uh, paid more attention to Pokusevski because of Adetokounmpo? And I'm speaking about, oh, another Greek, another prospect from Greece. I think definitely just the pipeline of, of players uh, from Europe. Um, you know, Giannis is a great example from Greece. You know, Jokic from Serbia, who's his native country. Um, all those guys, Giannis, Jokic, Doncic, um, bring just a very unique blend. Um, yeah, when you look at, at Alexi, I think you see you see some of those um, some of those traits that, that make him interesting. And if he continues to develop at the rate he's going, um, you can see him def- definitely turning into one one of those type of prospects. So you would suggest to an NBA coach to sign him or to check at him, check on him. Yeah, and I, I don't think NBA teams would would need um, me yeah. to tell them that. I, no, they, they they may ask me, but I, I don't think they they necessarily need. I think the, there's a lot of interest um, in him on on its own, and that was one. Of, that's one of the great things about basketball without borders, also, and playing in that camp because he has a chance to play in front of co- scouts from every NBA team, coaches from many teams. You know, that was a really special camp. We had Greg Popovich coaching at that camp. Um, so, so it's a, a great exposure opportunity. And I know there was a lot of buzz um, and a lot of teams coming and asking questions about him as a prospect. And that was when he was only 16 years old. Um, so it's pretty impressive to see um, at that age, he was already getting interest and now has a chance uh, to be drafted. But I think the platform of Basketball Without Borders is really helpful. It allows all the teams to see these players on one stage together. I think Basketball Without Borders is a very interesting program because also gives motivation to the very good players, okay, not all the young players across Europe, to attend sometime sooner or later to that program. Yeah, I think so. I think it's become, you know, one of the one of, if not the top international exposure camp in the world. And so I think the fact that um, you see the track record with the other players who have attended the camp as young players and then made it to the NBA, you know, the Marc Gasols or, um, you know, the, the uh, you know, Pascal Siakams or Joel Embiid's or Danilo Gallinari, you see all these guys who have um, been at the camp and now are, are succeeding at the highest level in the NBA. Um, I think that really makes it, uh, you know, attractive for young players who are trying to show, showcase themselves. Um, you know, I mentioned we had Greg Popovich at that camp. We all, a lot of those camps, we have the former players who have come from the camp um, go back and, and give back, coming and, and explaining, you know, their path and giving advice. And so I think that that experience is really valuable for young players. And I know, um, I'm sure Alexei, as well as all the other participants in the camp he was at, took that away.